Welcome to this latest video in the Bio-Inspired Materials playlist. In this particular video, I'm going to focus on bioglass. So if you talk about bioactive glasses, this is a group of surface reactive glass ceramic biomaterials. But in this video, I will purely focus on bioglass, which is the first of these materials to be developed in this glass, and which is often used in, for bone replacement. So as mentioned, bioactive glasses are a group of surface reactive glass ceramic biomaterials, and they have very unique properties in the sense of, um, of their biocompatibility and bioactivity. And because of their high biocompatibility, they're often used for implant devices. So in terms of their bioactivity, if you compare this to, for instance, people who have used hydroxyapatite, which is the mineral phase of bone before, um, but um, these bioglasses, contrary to just simple uh, hydroxyapatite, these materials, they have anti-infective and angiogenic properties, so they have more benefits to offer. And actually, bioglass was first developed in 1969 by Hench and his colleagues at the University of Florida. Um, so this is what we call calcium sodium phosphosilicate. So it's composed of silicon dioxide, calcium oxide, uh, sodium oxide and um, phosphorus pentaoxide. So it's a mixture of these components into different ratios. This bioglass uh, 45S5, which is the original bioglass, is developed by Hench. Uh, this has been marketed under the name Nova Min by GSK, so GlaxoSmithKline. So actually, besides I talked about here, used implant devices, but actually this can also be used in toothpaste, and uh, so it's also used in commercial toothpaste because it can strengthen the bones. But what's the mechanism behind uh, this action and how do these bioglasses actually work? Oh. Here you can see if we have the, uh, the bioactive glass, uh, once it's implanted, you can form like a hydroxyl carbonated appetite layer around it. So you get an adhesion of ions to it. So you have uh, calcium, phosphates, and um, to the, the silica gel surface. So they form like a layer which is very similar in composition to hydroxyapatite. So that's the mineral phase of bone that I mentioned before. The bones are like this hydroxyapatite, so you get bone forming cells that colonize the surface of the hydroxyapatite. So then further on you get new bone growing, so you get crystallization of the bone like matrix and maturation of the bone cells that lead to new bone formation. So that's why it's so helpful to have these materials in the case of, for instance, fracture. Uh, however, this is a very kind of simplified uh, scheme here, uh, because actually bone formation is composed of 12 steps. Uh, and this bioglass is very important here because it's involved in five different steps. Now what's unique about these bioglasses as well is that they can degrade. So you can implant them and they will degrade afterwards. So I'll come back to that later. But first let's talk about how you can manufacture these materials. There are two main methods. The first one is kind of the conventional technique that was used by Hensch and his colleague, which is a melt quench synthesis. So as we've seen in the previous slides, um, these materials are made out of a, a different oxides. And so you melt these oxides at very high temperatures. And by doing this, you gain very dense scaffolds. However, by doing that, you also have like a potential risk of defects. In contrast, the sol gel synthesis is conducted at low temperatures, where you use metal organic and metal salt precursors. So you form a gel by a reaction such as hydrolysis and a series of condensation reactions. So by doing this at lower temperatures, you get higher control. And you get higher porosity, whereas with the, the melt quench synthesis, you get very, very kind of dense structures. But we do know that this can lead to better degradation. And we want to make sure that we can control this degradation, because if you want to implant it in the body, we want to make sure that we can control how long it will actually stay there. The material was first developed in 1969, so quite a long time ago. Uh, and there's a new generation of materials coming. And I said, like in this video, I only focus on the original bioglass. And here you can see that timeline where there was the first evidence of bioglass, then it was commercialized, and this was already in the 80s, FDA approved in 1990. So in the 90s, people were able to develop different forms of bioglass, and they started to extend this application to, to use in orthopedics, so in terms of bones. Uh, but it wasn't until 2000 that the mechanism behind this bioglass, the, the mechanism that I've shown before, was elicited. Um, but the here also, as I mentioned, this is marketed by GSK, they started using it in dentistry. Uh, and now people are interested in also applying this to soft tissue. However, that will require more kind of adaptations to the materials. And the shortcomings uh, for the original bioglass that I mentioned is that it's difficult to process in 3D scaffolds. So it's kind of hard to center it into like a very dense network. Uh, and key for this, as we've seen, kind of people want to apply this also for like soft materials. 
it's a relatively got like a slow degradation and conversion to HA like material. So it's slow to work and it's slow to degrade. So in order for a lot of application, we want to make sure that we have absolute control over this and ideally speed it up, particularly the second step where we want to form like an HA layer around it as soon as possible. And also what's very important for these materials, um, there are uh, factors such as pH and temperature as the biological environment have a great impact on degradation. Um, so we want to make sure that once we implant this, that there's full control over how fast or how slow this degradation is going to go. Thanks for watching this latest video and hopefully this gave a little bit of insight into what bioglass is. In the next videos, I'm going to focus on how we would actually produce this bioreactor.